Good day, Father Matt Williams here in my parked car. December the 20th, Christmas is coming right around the corner. We'll continue our Advent Reflections, uh, looking at Pope Francis' apostolic exhortation, the joy of the gospel. All right, we're in chapter 5. We finally made it out of chapter 4. We're in chapter 5. Chapter 5 is called Spirit-Filled Evangelizers, roughly 29 or 30 paragraphs to this one. And uh, I'm kind of excited about get, jumping into this one, I'm not going to lie. So we talk about the Holy Spirit. There's no evangelization without the Holy Spirit. Our, our efforts are so weak and feeble and lack power and enthusiasm, zeal and inspiration. If the Holy Spirit isn't alive in us, there's no way we can evangelize. Remember, the church was born at Pentecost. The duty to go and proclaim Christ to the world was born on that day of Pentecost. Without the Holy Spirit, there's no evangelization happening. I can't convert a fly. But with the Holy Spirit, thousands of people can come to Christ. Millions of people can come to Christ. It's all about the Holy Spirit. And this is what the Holy Father is going to want to instill in us. Paragraph 259, which is the first one for this chapter 5, says, Spirit-filled evangelizers means evangelizers fearlessly open to the working of the Holy Spirit. We are fearlessly open. So right, you, it's like this willingness to be uncomfortable for Christ. The Holy Spirit is always going to make us uncomfortable. The question is, are we willing to say yes? Mary, our Blessed Mother, we heard in the Gospel today, was asked at a very young age to become the mother of Son of God. She was asked to get uncomfortable for the salvation of the world. And she said yes. She said yes. Remember, she wasn't living with St. Joseph yet. She had, even in the back of her mind, Getting pregnant without being living with him meant that there, he, this could be a scandal to people. Just think about that. Never mind the fact that she had made a pledge of virginity to the Lord and how he was going to handle that and how St. Joseph was going to react, right? But she trusted. She got uncomfortable for God's will. Awesome. If only I could do the same. Only by his grace. At Pentecost, the Holy Father writes, the Spirit made the apostles go forth from themselves. In other words, we can't, they come out of themselves, right? Experiencing the Holy Spirit fills us with the love of God and brings us out of ourselves to what? To go forth. The Holy Spirit turned them into heralds of God's wondrous deeds, capable of speaking to each person in his own, his or her own language. The Holy Spirit also grants the courage to proclaim the newness of the gospel with boldness in every time and place even when it meets with opposition. Now the Holy Father says, let us call upon him, who? The Holy Spirit. Today, firmly rooted in prayer, for without prayer, all our activity is being fruitless and our message empty. Jesus wants evangelizers to proclaim the good news, not with words, but above all, by a life transfigured by God's presence. And I will add, in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Father says in paragraph 260 that his goal here, he's not here to outline a whole way of Christian prayer and of, of, the, of, of spiritual life, but his, he simply wishes, he says, to offer some thoughts about the spirit of the new evangelization. The spirit of the new evangelization. He says in 261, when we say that something is spirited, quote unquote spirited, he says it usually refers to some interior impulse which encourages motivates, nourishes, and gives meaning to our individual and communal activity. Spiritual, spirit-filled evangelization is not the same as a set of tasks dutifully carried out despite one's own personal inclinations and wishes. How I long to find the right words to stir up enthusiasm for a new chapter of evangelization full of fervor, joy, generosity, courage, boundless love, and attraction. Yet I realize that no words of encouragement will be enough unless what? No words of encouragement will be enough unless what? The fire of the Holy Spirit burns in our hearts. This is the thing about being a Spirit-filled evangelizer, right? The Holy Spirit has to burn in our hearts. That becomes our interior impulse. The Holy Spirit becomes our interior impulse, which encourages, motivates, nourishes, and gives meaning to our individual communal lives. It's the Holy Spirit. Get to know the Holy Spirit. Ask Mary to help you to know the Holy Spirit. He says, a spirit-filled evangelization is one guided by the Holy Spirit, for he is the soul of the church, call, and the church is called to proclaim the gospel. By offering some spiritual motivations and suggestions, I once more invoke the Holy Spirit. I implore the Holy Spirit to come and renew the church, to stir and impel her to go forth boldly to evangelize all peoples. Pope, blessed Pope John the Twenty-Third, before he called the Second Vatican Council, prayed for a new Pentecost. 
a new Pentecost that would transform the world with the Word of God. And the, the, the Second Vatican Council is a wonderful grace to the Church as it is helping to set forth the direction upon which we are called to go in this 21st century. The pontificates of Blessed John Paul II, uh, Pope Benedict, and now Pope Francis are, are, are pontificates that have helped to implement the teachings of the Council and to bring those teachings forth. And now the focus in a very clear way from Pope Francis is that we are missionary disciples. The church must become a church that rolls up her sleeves and gets into the mess of people's lives. Paragraph 262. In this paragraph, he really wants to emphasize that our prayer does not lead us to isolate ourselves from other people or from the problems of the world, but that our prayer motivates us and impels us to make a gift of ourselves to God, others, and self. That the fruit of our prayer is a gift of ourselves in service, in, in, in evangelizing, sharing the good news with others. Spirit of evangelizers are evangelizers who pray and work. It's not either or. It's prayer and work. It's not work only or justice only. It's not prayer only. It's prayer and work. Prayer and work. What is needed is the ability to cultivate an interior space. In other words, this is like making room for God, making room in your heart, making room in, in your time, right? In your time of in the, each day, right? Making an interior space which can give a Christian meaning to, to commitment and activity. Commitment and activity. In other words, when we make space for prayer and our lives are overflowing with the Holy Spirit, our eyes are flowing with God's grace... Now our activity and our commitment mean something because it's God at work in us. And we're not just doing the activity to fill ourselves. We're not doing the activity because we want to feel good about ourselves. We're doing the activity because we're oh, it, it's the natural response to love. Love wants to give itself away for the sake of another, for the beloved. Without prolonged moments of adoration, of prayerful encounter with the Word, of sincere conversation with the Lord, our work easily becomes meaningless. So if you're not praying, your work can become about you and it can lose its meaning. Or you start doing it because of how it makes you feel. And you lose the motivation of what brought you into it and it starts to become self-serving. We lose energy as a result of weariness and difficulty. So things get really difficult. Where do you find your the strength to keep carrying on? It's got to be our prayer life that keeps us focused on Jesus and clinging to his cross, going out and laboring for him. It's so hard. Sometimes you don't want to get out of bed. It really is. And you say, Jesus, I love the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I just keep running back to Jesus, to the Eucharist, running to him in prayer, pouring my heart out to him. Lord, give me the grace. Give me the strength. Help me to carry my cross. Help me to keep my eyes fixed on you. If we're not praying, man, I don't know how people... I don't know. It's hard enough with prayer. I don't know what people do without prayer. But prayer's got to be our, our, our life force so that we can keep on keeping on because life is tough. Renouncing ourselves, carrying our cross, that's always done with prayer, in a spirit of prayer. The Holy Father says that the church urgently needs the deep breath of prayer. Prayer brings forth the Holy Spirit. And then lastly, in 263, he talks about the saints. That we need to study the lives of the saints. He says we can fall into the trap of saying like, you know, I wish things were like yesterday or like days gone by. It was so much easier to be a Christian way back when. You know, it's so much more difficult these days. And he says, you know what? I'd rather you say, let's not... Let, actually, I'm going to quote him instead of summarize him. Let us not say then that things are harder today. So instead of focusing on like, oh, it's harder if it wasn't like that. Because you got to remember, like, you know, the... I'm not saying times aren't tough or bad. But like, if you were a Christian before League Christianity was legalized in Rome... You'd be fed to the lions. Like, there was great persecution. Many of our brothers and sisters today in the Middle East and in Africa are killed for their belief in Jesus Christ. It still happens today. So, it's really hard to be a Christian today. And it was hard to be a Christian 2,000 years ago. Every generation has its challenges. The Holy Father says, I'd rather you not say, like, things are harder today. I'd rather you say, things are simply different. Okay? He says, but let us also learn from the saints who have gone before us, who confronted the difficulties of their own day. So I propose that we pause to rediscover some of the reasons which can help us to imitate them today. So he's saying that 
we need to learn from the wisdom of the saints because they lived through difficult times throughout their 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 lives whenever that period of that they lived in history that there's something to learn from them and how they handle the challenges of their day we can draw from them wonderful things words of wisdom encouragement witness to help apply to our own lives and how God is calling us to enculturate the gospel today and live for Christ. That's all I got. The Holy Spirit is de desiring, earnestly desiring to, to come into your life in a profound way today. Can you ask Mary to help you to open your heart and with her to say, Come Holy Spirit. Let us pray this now. Come Holy Spirit. Come by the means of the most powerful intercession of the Immaculate Virgin Mary, your well beloved spouse. God bless you.